so often love involves energy feeding. Do people come together oftentimes to fulfill the masculine feminine roles within each other? And it doesn't mean you need to be in a male or female biology. You can be a, a male and needing, uh, you have a strong feminine uh, aspect, but you need to fulfill and fill in the the feminine, uh, the the other your other masculine. So you choose partners, and so often uh, love does that. It's a it's kind of a fill in, and then there's energy feeding. You're looking for somebody else to complete you. You're looking at that relationship to make you whole, and therefore you're going to have a lot of energy feeding and. Even if it's not because of that, oftentimes in a love relationship, there is tremendous energy feeding. So often, and particularly in the past, it's changing now, but uh, the male in the relationship, using the basis of the family and of love for, for power, for power, stealing energy from the wife. Now, again, it's changing and it can go both ways, but uh, so often that, that intense energy feeding off another. And uh, after a number of years in a relationship like that, it wears the other person out. It tires them out. And then when the energy feeder in the relationship can no longer get energy because their partner is sick or tired or just uh, totally had it, then they go somewhere else to look for that energy feeding. Uh, they, uh, an affair, another person, somebody else they can start feeding from. So the whole, this whole kind of a pool of love, while being such a beautiful thing, humans have distorted it and they've, they've turned it into just another method for, for energy feeding. And I'll interject here that the sexual energy school that uh, Tobias and, <clears throat> and I put together, mostly Tobias, uh, deals with that. We talk about, we talk about not so much about love, but about uh, about energy feeding. If there is a relationship, uh, you're not going to tolerate energy feeding. That is one of the toughest dynamics of classic love. Energy feeding. I love you and I'm going to steal your energy. I love you and I'm going to be a vampire in bed in everyday life. I'm going to feed off you. Especially so many of you have had that and you've allowed it, but You've picked a partner so you could have somebody in your life, so you could experience love in your life, but then you've allowed them to feed off of you, thinking that, well, that's the price you have to pay for being in love, being in a relationship. You've let them into your pocketbooks. You've let them in, into your emotions. You've let them uh, steal your energy for, for their dramas. You won't be doing that anymore. You'll too easy to recognize uh, the energy feeders and the energy players, and you've had enough of that just in this lifetime. You're not going to allow that anymore. Any sovereign being knows that their energy is within them. It's their sovereign energy. It cannot be taken. It cannot be given. Your energy is your own. So why would you ever need to steal any? any? Why would you ever need to be an energy feeder or a victim anymore? It's your energy to begin with. That's one of the beauties of relationships in uh, Love 2.0. What you're truly best off doing is being in a state of master's love with yourself that is then uh, shared with others, even if they don't know what it is. Uh, and you can be with others who are not in that state of consciousness, uh, you easily be with others who are not in that state of consciousness because you always fall back on the love for yourself.